welcome back to the channel. We are doing the Unchained Melody number, song number 18. The show in Las Vegas was 18 songs and then there's an encore song. So that's the last one is the encore song. Uh, we'll get to that sometime soon. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, but it'll be probably no later than tomorrow, I would think. And, uh, of course, Unchained Melody, Angelina now is officially the owner of this song. <laughs> I'm not saying she bought it. I'm saying when she sings it, uh, she, she just has uh, her put her magic in there. She's put her soul, her soul in there, her heart. And she delivers to us a message suitable to the occasion every time she sings the song. And that is, I think other singers do that or can do that or try to do that. Uh, the thing with Angelina is the emotional content. Not many are able to do all this that she can do with a song. Deliver the message. Make the lyrics understandable and clear. Make us feel the lyrics so we get emotion. Uh, we understand the song. We, we actually get drawn into the song because now we understand it more. I don't know how many times I've said this, but this is absolutely true. Uh, Unchained Melody, beautiful song. I did some research on Unchained Melody after watching it. Um, I think it was for the uh, Nobel Peace Prize one. Oh, you know, and I found out that that song was written for a movie. This song was written for a movie that was made back in, I think, 1956, give or take a year or two. And it was an old black and white movie. It was made uh, about uh, a prison in California and the inmates. And it was an experimental prison. And it had, um, the warden would take the new prisoners in and say, okay, now listen, it's easy to escape from here. The fences are low. All there is is some barbed wire. So you take a coat or a blanket or something, throw it over the barbed wire, climb over the fence. You can get out of here real easy. Here, here's, here's the catch, okay? Once you get caught outside, and you will get caught outside, you will never come back to this prison again. You'll have to go to the other prisons, and you'll probably get a longer sentence because you escaped from prison, okay? So, yes, you can escape. We have very few guards here. They don't have weapons. Uh, they're not going to try to shoot you, none of that. Okay, matter of fact, they're not even going to chase you. <laughs> you go over the fence, you go over the fence, okay? Uh, but there's a punishment uh, to be had if you get caught, and you will get caught uh, most of the time. And uh, that's that. So this prison had, it was more like a, almost like a dorm for like a college sort of thing. It was, their, their family could come, they could have lunch, you know, like picnic and all that. And it was, uh, it was very uh, casual as, as far as prison life goes. And very uh, permissive, you know, with as far as having visitors and kids and all the other stuff. And, you know, then the, the song was written because Unchained Melody. The prison, the, actually the melody of the song is in the movie a lot. But the lyrics are not. There's only just one little small section uh, about three quarters of the way through, maybe closer to the end than three quarters where there's an inmate laying on a bed and he, he sings part of the lyrics. But he doesn't sing very much of it. doesn't sing the whole song, uh, is my recollection. But the lyrics the lyrics are in there. And, hang on. I can't have that. <laughs> Sorry. Had an extra, uh, that's why, right there. Okay, we'll just leave it that way. Space. Oh, it worked. Sorry. I just saw there was two... Uh, uh, Thing of a jigglies there took one away so um the song was written to basically drive home the anguish and the longing the longing to be free the longing to be home with your family the anguish that if i do when i get caught then i'm going to have a longer sentence and i won't be coming back to this nice prison i'll be going to one of them bad prisons okay not that any prison is uh, that nice or that great but they had a lot of freedom here in this prison that they wouldn't have in a normal prison and as i said it was an experimental prison this is based on actual fact the, the the prison thing as far as the story goes i don't know if they're real characters or not i didn't get that far into my research but 
Uh, the, the story about the prison is actually true. That actually was a prison. They actually did it just like that, and that's how it was. So I learned that. And why was that important? Because when Angelina was singing for the Nobel Peace Prize, Unchained Melody, she was expressing to us that anguish that uh, the lady Norga Mohammadi, I think, is her, was her name? Norga Mohammadi, uh, is in prison in... Boy, that's pretty good off the top of my head, I think. Uh, in prison in Iran, I believe, for uh, speaking out on women's rights. Basically, I think the main thing was the, the right to not wear the veil and stuff like that. You know, that would should be a choice. Uh, but over there, it's enforced that you have to wear it. And if you don't wear it, you go to the prison or whatever else happens to you. I get punished in some way. And uh, she's in prison for speaking out against that. And... The thing is, she's got two kids. I think they're, uh, they are they accepted the prize for it, the Nobel Peace Prize, because she's still in prison. And they were very uh, articulate. But can you imagine, she's been in prison, I think, I think, they haven't seen her in like seven years or something like that. And she's been out of prison occasionally and, and then went back. I think she feels so strongly about her cause that she's determined to... Uh, uh, how would you say it, drive home the point by sacrificing her own freedoms to to make the point. And that, that, I'll tell you, I don't know. You know, you can look at that a lot of different ways. You look at it as it's brave and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, you can say that. But what about the kids, you know? What about their, you know, not having their mother in the picture? How, how important is that? You know, I think that's very important. But this lady has uh, given that up to drive home the, the, the women's rights. In Iran, it's 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 an interesting thing to think about. You know, how many people would actually do that? I don't think a lot, not that many people would actually do that, sacrifice time with their family to uh, drive from a point. But you know, it's here. Look at all the you know. Look at the attention. She wins the Nobel Peace Prize. That's a lot of attention. You know, now people think about that. Say, wow, you know, she's you know she's she's done so much, and then people can sort of sympathize with her cause. Maybe change will come about. Maybe it'll help bring change about. Who knows? Remember, in countries like Iran and some other countries around the world, they don't. When there's protests, sometimes there's violence that goes along with that. And uh, you know that's unfortunate. And that, no matter how, where, or how it happens, that we have violence and people get hurt or sometimes killed. You know, it's unfortunate. You know, I don't think. I'd rather see a world where we don't have to go to that extreme to make a point. Uh, that's just me, you know. I I think the loss of life is uh, is uh, tragic because you never know which person that dies in there may have had contributions to make down the road that we'll never know about. I don't know. Something to think about, right? So I. The reason why I'm going on this little rant is because this song, at the Nobel Peace Prize, Angelina was able to drive, she made that whole song feel that way, that anguish and that longing. And then at the very end of that song, when she sang the high note, it's to me, it almost was like, it almost was like some kind of a reverse apex kind of a thing where the note went up like this, and then it sort of, Dissipated and it kind of like went like this out into the universe, you know, like that. Like, uh, uh, I don't know, almost like then it would shower us with love and whatever, you know, I don't know. But it was uh, it was extraordinary. When I heard the song that we're going to watch right now in Las Vegas, Angelina was, I thought, obviously, singing to her audience. Whole different feel. Because she's singing for her audience, who she loves, and she's uh, performing for us what she loves to do. And she's singing what she very much loves to do. She compares, She remember she was little, she said, uh, singing is like breathing to me. I believe that's true of her, okay? She loves to sing and does it all the time. We see all the TikTok videos where they're in the car driving around singing all the time. And so the whole feel of the song changes depending on what she's singing the song for. And I just think it's, you know, it's, she has that ability. And whenever she touches a song, it is what she wants it to be. And this song is one of them. She has the magic touch.
So she owns the song now, I think. There might be others that can sing it and do a nice job. There might be others that will sing it and do a really nice job because they're emulating what Angelina has done with the song. Uh, I've seen some of those vi videos out there, uh, YouTube videos. And uh, they basically are copying Angelina, who's copying Queen, doing a song. <laughs> but Angelina didn't copy Queen. Angelina made a whole new song, okay? And that's why they can copy, they can actually copy Angelina and not be copying Queen. Uh, it gets convoluted, doesn't it? Let's watch the video instead of listening to me yappity yap all, all day long. That was a long one. I'm just apologizing for the length. Uh, I probably should be a little more conscious of that, I guess. I guess. So I'm going to shrink me up. I'm going to put me up here in the corner where I was. I'm going to make this as big as I can make it. Oops, didn't cooperate that time. There we go. Oh, now my picture's gone. Remember, my picture was there before. Does it matter? Not really. Okay, so my picture's not there, but that's okay. We don't worry about me too much. Let's watch the song. Next song we do is Unchained Melody. <laughs> this song as it means so much to me. I uh, this rendition that I'm gonna do. I hope you guys enjoy it. I uh, Elvis. I just want to say that Elvis has he's in my heart forever and always. And I definitely felt his spirit here tonight, and um, I'm just incredibly honored to just be here with you all.
Okay. Well, hopefully you guys won't see this, but uh, the, I had flipped my camera to uh, vertical rather than horizontal uh, for that whole thing, pretty much. So I'll have to go and make sure I edit it and turn it so it's horizontal so you can see it better. Um, but that's one of the things with raw footage. That's why I like to always remind people that it's raw footage. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't remember that I did that specifically in this song. Uh, now that I saw it, I said, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, but uh, I didn't change it. I kept the raw footage because, I, again, what do I prize? Authenticity and genuineness, right? So you just got to see that's, that's my footage. So what's on there? My hands clapping, some darkness when I was putting the camera down to stand up to applaud and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you got to see it all there, okay? And is it interesting or anything you need to watch? No. But, you know, I just want you to see it's real. That's what happened, okay? <laughs> so, if you were to watch video one all the way through to video two, I had the camera running, I believe, I don't know if I shut it off like once, maybe. The uh, security guards were coming around and hassle, and James was sitting right next to me, James Thiel. And, um, but I had my camera sticking right out front. You can see it, actually, in some videos. Uh, I had my camera sitting right out like this, right out in front of me. I don't know if you can see my hand or not. I was filming, the, and they, they never looked at, they looked right at me. They looked at me, they looked at the camera, looked back at me, never said a word. And I don't know why. I know James had this little camera. I guess it really was bothering me. They didn't know what it was, I guess. So... Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I just kept video, and they, they said to James, I think, and a couple of other people, they said, you can't videotape the whole thing. I don't know what that actually means. I mean, obviously, they don't want us to videotape from f start to finish, I guess. I don't know why, you know. So if you shut it off for a couple of seconds, turn it back on, does that mean now you got two videos that are not the whole thing? One's half, one's the other half? I don't know. How, how do you interpret that? I, I really don't know. And they... They told us that before the concert, but they also were coming down when they were hassling like James. They told him that again during the concert. I'm trying to film the concert, and they're talking to James about, you know, you can't videotape this, you can't do that, you can't do this. You can hear it on one of the videos. That's like, hey. And then after a while, I started to feel like, hey, how come, no, how come nobody's hassling me? What's, <laughs> how come I don't get any attention? So, yeah, they never did. So if you watch my videos, basically... From the first one to the last one, it's pretty much the entire thing. I think I might have shut the camera off for a couple of seconds here or there. Uh, I can't remember why I did that, but I think I may have. I think I was checking some settings on the on the cam, my phone or something. I don't remember. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, pretty much the entire thing. Just as I saw it and just as I was recording it, and I did change it from vertical to horizontal back and forth a couple of times. I wanted to get the whole scene in the back because it was so, uh, you know, this is Las Vegas, man. They know how to entertain. They had, the, you know, the big screen TV in the back. They had all the different lights going on. You had all the band members back there. Mostly they were like in a, almost like a silhouette fashion. And um, I wanted to try to capture all that too, especially during Diamonds Are Forever where it was, you know, they had uh, James Bond looking type of stuff going on back there. So I thought it was pretty cool. The whole the whole concert was absolutely, uh, uh, you know, after this, there was an intermission where Angelina went and did a meet and greet. You know, she never stops working, that girl. And then uh, went and did the second show, then did another meet and greet. You know, it's not enough just to do uh, uh, two 19-song 19, 19 concerts back-to-back, -back, 38 songs altogether. But, uh, you know, now she, she put in some meet and greets in there, too, to meet her fans. So... Uh, you know, she's just an extraordinary talent. She really is. There's not many people that could keep up. She's young, so she's got, a, you know, she probably can stand the pace. But, uh, yeah, it's a, that's a lot. That's a lot for, you know, especially with your voice, you know. I don't know if your voice is that. Uh, most people's voices could do that much uh, and have any resiliency left. So, let us get out of here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And, uh... We'll see you on the next video. Have a good day, good night, good morning, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. So long.